Yes, I'm wearing the same grummy sweater I was last time. I have my Christmas tree that I found in the garbage can. We've got candles. It's Christmas time. Let's get a rolling. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I have my November wrap up for me. Now, I was looking through my stats on, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking through my stats on um, Goodreads and I realized that I didn't read all that much in November but here's the thing what I did read in November was actually really good and one book in particular is going to make it into my best books of the year probably my best books of all time and that is the book that if you watch the video that came uh, before this one is one of the books that I'm waiting to arrive in order to show it to you and I'm really sad that I don't have it but we'll get to that um, when we get to that. As always I am going to go in order of which I read these books so you know I don't know what to say. <laughs> Well, technically, the first book that I read during the month of November, I actually started it in October and finished it in November, and you can see that in my November wrap-up, which I will link up here, is um, <laughs> Into the Deep by Mira Grant. I still don't understand how this is one of the scariest books some of you ever read, especially with that flipper chapter, but I'll go into depth about that one in the, in the thing, in the, in the thing. Ugh! In the wrap up. I haven't filmed in a while, can you tell? <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the books that I did read this month and um, some of them you saw in a vlog that I put up and the first one I read was Horrid. Um, Horrid by Katrina Lino. Hor Horrid by Katrina Lino I gave 2.5 stars to and it's about, I guess what you can say, it's a ghost story. It's kind of like a gothic victorian e golf story i can never tell the difference between gothic and victorian horror story whatever um but the point is that there's this girl her mom uh well her dad just died and they had to leave sunny california for somewhere that is really cold and you know a place i'd like to be and i always love it when in these books it's like we move into this incredibly big manner i hate it it's like bitch what the fuck, girl? If I was going to move into an incredibly big manor, like after living in a small apartment my entire life and it's like full of like ghost stories and all that crap, I'd be hella excited. I don't know about you, but everybody in like these books is like, I am so upset that I have inherited this incredible mansion. And it's like, oh boy. Oh boy, let me tell you something about taxes. But anyway, so and about buying houses. But the the whole story is this um, young woman whose name I cannot remember at the moment um, starts to act strange, and you get the feeling that there might be a ghost in the house, or that her mental health is going downhill, or some something definitely happened. And in this town. Um, yeah, a bunch of things are going wrong and um, then the ending happens and it's a completely loose thread ending that makes no sense and that ruins the entire book. So <laughs> I gave it 2.5 stars. Really, like I say, I always love open endings. Open endings are my jam. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen and because that's life in the end. You, you, do, you don't know what's going to happen except in this book there is something that happens that needs to have a resolution because we have established that we're in the real world and in the real world this would have a resolution that is not a very good resolution and I actually wanted to see more of that. I wanted the 200 pages that happens after the ending of this book because it's just like, oh, so, so there's going to be no repercussions for that or is there? I, I don't know, maybe. I, I want to give something, anything away but I think there are going to be some serious repercussions, if you know what I mean. So I didn't like it. I, I mean, I, I was loving the book. I really, really, really was loving the book. And then that ending happened and I was like, what the fuck? Why would, why would you... I'm sorry. I almost just... I'm sorry. I almost destroyed my Christmas tree. And then that ending happened and I was like, why, why would you do this as an ending? Whatever. Moving on horrid was indeed horrid although i kind of want to buy it let me explain to you why because the cover art is amazing also horrid and monica have the same number of letters 
Is that is that a good enough reason to buy a book? I don't think so. Um, but you know, my cats are having so much fun with my Christmas decorations. Okay, the next book that I read is Robopocalypse that by Daniel H. Wilson. I do want to point out that Robopocalypse was written by a member of the Cherokee nation so this is actually a BIPOC author and I love reading apocalyptic or science fiction books written by BIPOC authors I think they're like oh, they're my jam they're my jam they're my bomb.com I'm old anyway so Robopocalypse what is Robopocalypse about Robopocalypse is about um, basically AI there's a scientist he's been experimenting with AI he's been trying to make AI but every time he does, the AI kind of wants to destroy humanity. I don't know why. Hmm. Or at least they want to um, rule over humanity. But the, the last time he creates this AI, the AI actually manages to escape. And it's told kind of in the vein of... Um, you know, it, what's that book called? Uh, World War Z, where you get different points of view from different places. This is also in that vlog that I talked about. And honestly, this is just such a great time. It's all about what happens. You know at the beginning of the story that we won the war. We won the war against the robots, but you don't know how. And you get to find out how. And this is just... I loved how all the storylines came together. We have storylines from Japan, we have storylines from North America, and I like that we have storylines from like um, military North America, but also from like little people. You know those little, you know those hackers in their computers at home just doxing people and having, you know, th we get stories from those people. We also get stories from Native Americans and what happens in reserves. I always appreciate when they add that into books, especially if it's on voices. So um, yeah, I really love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I do mention in my uh, weekend reading vlog that this is not... Te Chiang esque. I, I, I hate to make the comparison, but a lot of people, ooh, I'm really blown out. But a lot of people have mentioned that this is just like kind of empty, and, and I don't think so. I just think that, you know, some people like what they like, and yes, this book might not have the most incredible, like, introspective you know sort of thing but it definitely has a lot to say and it packs a punch and I love the characters and I really appreciate it there is a sequel to this I'm thinking of picking it up I'm not sure yet I think that this as a standalone is really good and it does have an open ending for you to interpret later on so if if you want to a fun ride. I, I like to call this Independence Day without the America centralism. So if you want a fun ride, I definitely recommend this book. It has some twists, it has some turns, it has really cool characters. You kind of grow attached to every single character, at least I did. And yeah, Robopocalypse, man. Get on that. Get on, get on that shit. Next. Next up, I read the book that um, is going to make it on my favorite list of the year. I'm just going to warn you. It's going to happen, you know. So there's no point in hiding it. But um, it is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Dalton Brooks. Now, if you saw my previous video, you know that I ordered this book about a month ago, but it's taken forever to get to me. And I wish I had it physically because I absolutely adored this book. Now, I will warn you, this is a slow burner. This is not there's no action in this book whatsoever. In fact, most of it is just metaphor upon metaphor upon metaphor, and it's a lot about isolation. This book tells the story of a man who was once a really famous astrophysicist, like, like he was the one everyone wanted at their school teaching. He was um, the, the, the one that, he was just the astrophysicist in the world. Um, the thing is, he was also somebody who, liked to experiment with people. Let me let me explain this. He was somebody that he never really felt loved by his mom or his dad. He never felt understood by them. He had a really rough childhood. So he likes the idea of making women fall for him and then seeing how far he can take it and then just leaving them. He literally ghosts them. And um, what we find is that this is the end of his life. He's no longer the hotshot, young, 
um, astrophysicist that everybody wants. He's just kind of an old dinosaur that kind of has been forgotten, really. And he is on his, what he considers to be his last mission on uh, Antarctica when a helicopter comes and they're like, listen, there's going to be no more helicopters. This is it. There's rumors of war. Things are not looking good. We're leaving. And he decides to stay behind. And with him is a little girl that has been left behind too. So he's in out there in the wilderness in Antarctica trying to survive. And that's one storyline. So we get to hear about his past, about the regrets he has, about, you know, how he tried to fix things, but there was just no fixing it anymore. You know, he, he did the things he did and how he slowly starts to realize that he really regrets his decisions and how he treated people and then you know you kind of know that he's gonna die there with this little girl and what's gonna happen to this little girl and why did they leave her behind now with this is another story of an expedition that is sent to saturn this expedition uh went to saturn um everybody's really happy about it um you know and then they stop receiving messages from Earth altogether. In fact, they say Earth is quiet and they're not getting anything. So they are assuming the worst, the end of humankind. And they are alone in a spaceship for months, not knowing what they're going to find when they return to Earth and trying so desperately to communicate with anyone. And of course, as you can imagine, the, um, the man in Antarctica in this spaceship will eventually make contact. This is not a big secret, but it's so much more than that. That's the thing. Like, I don't mind telling you that. I don't mind that there is going to eventually be contact. Don't wait for it at the beginning of the book. It's going to be way at the end of the book. But it's such a beautiful story. It's such a touching story. Another open ending that I just adored. I love... I loved everything about this book. I mean, at some point, I thought that the, the, the communication between them, because I had read the synopsis, I thought it was going to happen at the beginning of the book and that they were going to communicate back and forth and whatever. It doesn't. Actually, you have to wait until the end of the book. So if you're waiting for that, just know that it's not going to happen for a long time. But it's so good. It talks so much about human emotions, about the realities, about isolation. And I think in this time, in this day and age, talking about isolation is something truly important and how isolation, you know, how it affects you and, and how the way you live your life will eventually catch up to you and how you're going to deal with that when the time comes to deal with it, you know? I think Lily Dalton Brooks wrote a beautiful story. And by the way, um, December 23rd on Netflix, they premiere the movie that is based off loosely from what I thought, from what I, I'm sorry, from what I saw um, on this book. It's called Midnight Sky. Um, so if you see the, if you can see the trailer, I will link it down below. Um, they made a lot of changes. They made a lot of changes, but I think the story, like the, the core of the story is still the same. And I'm so excited to watch it. I really am. This is probably, this, no, no, this is not probably, this is going to make one of my, my top lists of the year. In fact, after I read this book, I was kind of, I had this feeling of completion that I haven't had in a long time, you know, like I, I felt like I had completed, like I don't need to read anything else. I don't know, it, it, the, you know that famous book hangover? And I honestly was okay not reading anything else, but you know, it was like the third book I read in the month. So um, I, I just decided I, I could have stopped. I really could have stopped reading and that's something that I'm going to try to do. I'm not going to, in, in, the, in the coming um, months, like in the 2021, if I read something that really touches me to that point where I just feel like, okay, you did it, you read the book of the month, why, you know, if I don't feel like reading anything else, I'm not gonna force myself to read anything else. And that's exactly what I did because next I read, or I DNF'd really, um, 
To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by uh, Christopher Paolini. And I was not gonna let that book ruin the experience of having read Good Morning Midnight. I was not, that was just not going to happen. That was not, mm, nay nay, not today, Satan. Sorry, nay nay, Bailey Sarian. If you watch Bailey Sarian, you know where that's from. But um, uh, this is about aliens, I guess, and uh, there's a review of it. It's really bad. It, Oh gosh, it's so bad. I obviously I gave uh, Good Morning Midnight five stars. I didn't even rate this book because um, if I would have, I would have given it, given it one star. It starts off basically ripping off the Alien franchise, and then from then on, no character is of consequence except the character the main character is having sex with. And also, there's aliens that are super deadly and that look like jellyfish. So what do we call them? The jellies. Yeah, that's right, Christopher Paolini decided that that was going to be what we call that. So there's that. Next up, I actually finished the series, oh my gosh, who am I? But I read The Stone Sky by M.K. Jemison, and I gave this four stars. I'm gonna be honest, this book was not my favorite. I think my favorite book from the whole series is the second one, The Obelisk Gate. Um, in this book, I, I don't want to tell you what happens, but basically this is the conclusion to everything that's been going on. You find out who the narrator is, why they're narrating, you find out where certain characters come from, and it's just the resolution. Um, I, I was satisfied with the resolution. It was very well done. It was beautiful. N.K. Jetman's writing is beautiful. But this was way too much fantasy for me. Like it, it, it really did go, which I think is kind of amazing that N.K. Jemison was able to go from sci-fi to fantasy, you know. But it was just a little bit too fantasy for me, and also, um, yeah, I, I, I. This was not my favorite book in the series, honestly. I don't think it was a, a bad ending. I don't think it was a like, what do you call that? A weak ending. I don't think it was a weak ending. I actually think it was a very strong ending. I just think that this is not the book for me. And um, even though I love the series as a whole, I think that sometimes some books are for you, sometimes they're not. This book was not my book. I really like The Obelisk Gate. I also find that M.K. Jemison has a very clear formula to her writing where it's like, hey character, you have to do this. And character's like, mm, or not I don't know you know and it's like no 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 you have to do this and characters like well can I just put that off for a while you know <laughs> I said that in my review of um, the city we became where it's like it's really clear what you have to do why are you not doing it and I felt the same thing I, I think the story was too drawn out because the main character here was like not doing what they were set off to do from the beginning so it just it just didn't, it didn't hit home like I wanted it to. I think the ending, I, like I said, it's not a weak ending. It's just not for me. Make that what you will. All right, then I read one of the most fun books that I've read this year. That is, it's a silly book. It's a silly book, silly nilly book. Um, and it was written by N.K. Eng England, and that is uh, The Disasters. Um, it says, space is hard, grab a helmet. This is such a fun story. I mean, this is, okay, so this is a story about a bunch of rejects. Like, they got rejected from the Space Academy, and um, we have populated other planets. I don't know if it's outside of the solar system or inside of the solar system, I don't know. I'm sorry, like, the sun is, like, beating on me, but, you know, what can you do? I'm not using my light at the moment. But anyway, so um, they, they just get thrown out of the academy, whatever, it happens. We have um, colonized other planets, but we can't go back to Earth because we might bring germs from these planets to Earth and, uh, well, you know, it's really dangerous. I don't know what that reminds me of. Oh yeah, okay, colonization. Anyway, so, <laughs> so um, they, they get you know they're they're being sent home from this space station where they wanted to study and what ends up happening is the space station gets attacked 
they, they get blamed for it. There is a coup d'etat happening of people wanting to go back to Earth. It's fun. It's action-packed. There's really no thing. This is like it's just a lot of fun. There's also a lot of character, uh, a lot of VIPOC representation, and um, I believe NK Eng England. I'm sorry, I can't say that. NK England is non-binary. Um, they uh, they use they them pronouns, and I just thought this that this was a really fun book. I mean, it was a fun book. It was just really exciting. It reminded me a lot of. Orion Lost, where I think the characters act like kids. Also, bisexual character that says they're bisexual. Love that shit. There is kind of a love triangle, which I think was interesting because it was a bisexual love triangle between like two boys and one girl. And then I don't know, I liked it. It was fun. There's nothing else I can say. I gave it four stars because. I really enjoyed my experience of reading this book. It was just a lot of fun and kind of what I needed after um, kind of the disappointing reading month that I had been having. After that, I read, I'm gonna read it here because I can't, <laughs> my brain is just like mushy. All right, so I read The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ning Vo. I think that, I'm so, I'm so sorry if that's not how you pronounce it, but here is the, the cover with the title and the author, I apologize. But um, this is such a beautiful, beautiful novella. I gave this novella a five out of five stars. And it's not like me because it's a fantasy novella. And it, you know me, I don't like fantasy. But I liked how it was used here. I liked, it just swept me away. I was completely swept up into this world. In the beginning, it was a little bit hard to follow. But we are following somebody who is basically kind of like a, a, a historian. They're a historian, and they're taught, and and they're going to go somewhere to find out about the the empress that um, just fell from power and how th her child is going to ascend to power. And they find this house, uh, and they found a, a woman named Rabbit. And Rabbit is telling them the story about the Empress. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the other Empress. I think it's the Empress of the North. But it is a devastating, beautiful, amazing read. And I recommend that you just, just read it. I think it actually, I don't know why, but it, I thought it was like such a holiday read. Possibly because, you know, I don't read a lot of holiday books. But it was a lot of fun. I really, really recommend it. I loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. And I don't want to give anything else away. It's just it's such a short story. And I and I want you to go into it. Just don't even read the synopsis. Don't even read the synopsis. Just go into it, you know, completely unaware of what you might hear or, you know, hear because I, I, I listened to it on audiobook. Um, and experience it just for the first time. You're gonna love it. I, I promise you. Yeah, I do. Okay, back from a battery change and from <laughs> putting down my window so that I wasn't so blown up. I realized that I forgot to talk about The Waking Gods. I also read The Waking Gods, which is the second book in the Themis file, um, and this is by Sylvain Novelle. Uh, this is the continuation of the Themis files, and in this case, we have another robot that appears on Earth. Don't worry, I'm not giving anything, anything away. It's in the literal first page. <laughs> and they have to find a way to fight it. And also, um, don't get attached to many characters. That's all I'm gonna say, don't get attached to anyone, because uh, this book was real intense. I liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I don't know what is wrong with me with this series that it's not hitting like really intensely. Mm, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the format in which it's told because it's not told in the traditional format. This is told through um, like logs of, of conversations. So it's really hard to connect with the characters or something like that. Also, I kind of don't care. Like, like that's the thing. I kind of don't care where these aliens are coming from or anything. I just, but that's a me thing. I mean, you might really like it. I, I think it's a well-told story. I'm just not connecting with it. It's like, again, with the stone gods. It just wasn't my cup of tea, if you will. Or my cup of hot chocolate. 
And but anyway, uh, finally we get to the last book of the month that I read and that is Ruth Ware's Turn of the Key. And I had been wanting to read this book for so long. I've been wanting to read Ruth Ware's Turn of the Key for ages ages but it just never went on sale on anything so i just didn't want to pay full price for it because i wasn't sure if i was gonna like it and then i found it through audible and i was like gonna read that because i have a credit and i gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars i really liked it it was a lot of fun i i the thing is i i i read it after i had read after i had read after i had watched um the haunting of bly manor so i couldn't stop picturing the haunting of bly manor and the characters as the characters of the haunting of bly manor because if you don't know uh bly manor is um loosely based on the turn of the key along with another story from henry james and um so it, the turn of the key is based on the turn of the screw which is where Bly Manor comes from blah 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 um it was really interesting I liked that you really didn't know what was happening you didn't know who was the good guy who was the bad guy I mean you kind of do know that one of the people in the book is pretty bad but I didn't see the twists coming I enjoyed them I really liked what was going on and just in case you don't know basically um, this is the story about a young woman named Rowan Rowan applies to this seemingly almost too perfect ad online for a nanny and uh, these people are architects they're really famous they make incredible houses and they're super rich they have three three one two three no they have four <laughs> they have four girls she has to take care of them and as somebody that is a nanny by the way i did find that rowan was probably one of the worst nannies that i have ever met but uh she tried she tried her best um i mean i can't imagine me in that situation but yeah there's cameras everywhere you, you know at any moment um anybody could be watching you there's even a camera in her room it's really kind of eerie and creepy and i think it's a good twist on the whole ghosts are watching you idea you know and in the end i loved the ending again it's an open ending you guys know i love an open ending um and it was i i liked it it was really good it wasn't the best book that i've ever read but it's definitely up there with one of the better thrillers that i've read so good for you Ruth Ware um I might eventually buy the physical format if I can find it in a like reasonable price range you know but other than that yeah that's it that those are all the books I read this month let's see how many that was I, I didn't even count that's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine books not bad um uh, yeah i mean what, what what can i say about that i read nine books you know like that's actually pretty amazing but i'm really glad that uh to be here to be filming again i have free time now also my parents moved out so right now i don't have to worry about anybody coming in going out everything well my husband and my cats that always try to destroy my videos but other than that uh, I'm really happy to be making this video and I'm not gonna put pressure on myself to make more videos or to make a certain amount of videos I am going to still try to post every Monday Wednesdays and Fridays but if I skip a post you know I'm sure you can understand that I have a life or I try to really hard have a life <laughs> But anyway, without any further ado, I bid you adieu and I hope to see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. In and my, me and my um, garbage find Christmas tree uh, really enjoy being on camera. I love reminding people I found this in the garbage. <laughs> Bye!